My name is Candace. I am stepping in for Sue Strong, who instructed in this class and unfortunately is not able to be with us today. Um, she was a key part of this class, so I just wanted to mention her. Uh, I am here to welcome all of you, uh, both the people that are here in the audience as well as the live stream people. We are live streaming this from the Oregon Campus Visitor Center. Now, I did want to mention that in the audience today, we have a lot of folks that are interested in raising puppies. And um, so thank you for coming, and Linda and I will be doing a tour with you after the graduation ends, probably about 10 minutes or so. So I wanted to say thank you to the four guide dog teams that we are here to celebrate today. I did not have the pleasure of working with these folks until yesterday, but I have to say your dedication, the hard work you did, I appreciate it so very much because it's not easy. These guys work hard all day from first thing in the morning all the way until the last relieving at night. So congratulations, guys. Let's give them a hand. The next group of people I'd like to recognize are the puppy raisers. Now, the puppy raisers, for these guys, they're here, you're gonna see them on stage a little bit later. Um, puppy raisers in general are <laughs> they're amazing people. We give them these little fluff balls. They're so sweet, they have that new car smell, puppy breath. They also have little fangs, and they take these little fluff balls and turn them into very well socialized dogs. These dogs are expected to work in New York City or in rural areas in the Midwest, on the coast, wherever. We have people that, um, you know, they'll take their guide and fly around the world with them, and they, these, these dogs are just amazing, and that's because the puppy raisers put a lot of work into them. So there, I'd love to get a round of applause for them. We also, we also have other people that very much impact our group, and one of them that I would like to mention are donors. Now, it doesn't really matter if you're donating a little bit or a lot. We don't get government funding, so it's very important. And we have three groups of people that we're gonna mention later on that are donators. Uh, one is Google Industries, another is Carl E. Wynn Foundation, and then the last one is Lillian, Tr I'm gonna kill this, sorry, Tremoroli and thank you very much. She is um, sponsoring harnesses throughout 2024. All right, then, like I said, it takes a village. I also want to thank the volunteers. Volunteers come to campus and they, um, they help with, you know, walking the dogs, preparing the food, uh, doing things in administration, the, um, the gift shop, volunteers, people that will take dogs uh, that maybe don't do the best in the kennels and they'll foster care of them. And then we also have um, people that actually show up at about four in the morning to take our clients to the airport. So our volunteers are incredible. All right, can I get a round of applause for the volunteers and the donors? <laughs> then the last one I really wanna mention um, is the staff. It takes a lot to keep this place running, whether or not it's keeping the residence center nice and clean or the food or keeping the dogs happy in the kennel, um, all the way to, oh gosh, just maintaining the grounds out here. So those guys are very much appreciated. And the instructor staff that worked with this team, um, of which you will meet later, is Mallory. Uh, so. I'd say let's get this show on the road. And the first thing I want to do is turn you guys over to a um, video. And then after that, we'll start working with clients. Thank you. At Guide Dogs for the Blind, we believe that everyone deserves to move through the world safely and confidently to live the life they want to live. A man and his guide dog walk through a park. Our life-changing programs meet people who are blind or visually impaired wherever they are along their journey, whether that's by matching individuals with highly qualified guide dogs, providing guide dog readiness skills in our orientation and mobility immersion program, a man holds a white cane and smiles broadly, or pairing youth and adults with the companionship of a canine buddy. A young girl cuddles with her canine buddy. Together, we are GDB. My name is Renee Carrasco. Uh, my dog's name is Snoopy. 
Renee sits in front of a fireplace. So the reason that I wanted to get a guide dog was because I came across some videos from Guide Dogs for the Blind, and that was my introduction to guide dog travel. Renee and Snoopy walk along a city sidewalk and cross a street at an intersection. What I saw was the, the ease of travel, the speed that the, uh, the guide dog handler would move with. That's what I wanted for myself. Um, and not only that, but it was also the companionship. Renee and Snoopy play with a tug toy outside in the yard. Working with Snoopy uh, has changed my life dramatically um, because there's so much freedom that comes along with having a guide dog. It's made the hard parts of blindness not so hard. Renee sits next to Snoopy and gives him a pat on the chest. I feel like my outlook on life and the world is so much more positive having Snoopy in my life. My name is Amit Ahuja and my guide dog's name is Tashi. I had the opportunity to complete Guide Dogs for the Blind's Orientation and Mobility Immersion Program. Amit stands on a path with his white cane. And not only did it help me learn to navigate my environment more safely using a white cane, it also made me an even more confident guide dog handler. My experience was just fabulous. Amit and his O&M instructor analyze an intersection and cross a city street. We trained in different locations, practiced different skills, worked out a way to analyze a traffic crossing. I think GDB has transformed my life. To say that it's meeting my needs would be an understatement. My name is Ella and this is my canine buddy, Lafferty. Ella sits on the floor of a living room next to a black lab. Lafferty is just so amazing in many ways. He's such a good boy. He brings me so much joy and is one of my best friends. With kids with visual impairments, Ella's mom, Christy McKerney. The struggle is real for social contact. It's hard to make friends sometimes. And with Lafferty, uh, he's an automatic draw for all kids, which is wonderful. Lafferty has totally opened up uh, for Ella new social connections. Back to Ella. I would recommend Canine Buddies. They just, they were just really good dogs and they can change a person's life and make it better. All of Guide Dogs for the Blind Services are provided free of charge and our work is made possible by the generous support of our donors and volunteers. Renee sits next to Snoopy on the grass in the park. We receive no government funding. This organization has made such a huge impact on my life and the lives of so many countless people and the donors are the ones that make that possible. Close up of Snoopy. Thank you so much. Ella and Lafferty. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Amit and his guide dog Tashi sit on the beach and watch the sunset. Together, we are unstoppable. To learn more about our life-changing programs and to support our work, please visit guidedogs.com or scan the QR code. Hello everyone, I am Mallory Hofer and I am the class supervisor and I also got the privilege of being an instructor, so I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate with everyone today. So our guide dog program is a two week class where clients are matched with a dog that is compatible with their lifestyle in order to enhance their mobility. So today we're celebrating four clients who came and did our in-resident guide dog class. Our first client today is Veronica Godina from Winchester, California. She has a big family, including her husband, three kids, two dogs, and a cat. She's very excited to have her new guide as she starts her job, new job as a therapist. And today, Veronica is receiving her first guide, Crumpet, a male yellow, yellow Labrador retriever, who, if you notice, had a kiss for good luck today on his forehead. 
Crumpet was raised by Margaret Baker of Bakersfield, California, and Peggy Henry and Shannon Patterson of Monument, Colorado. And this team was sponsored by Car the Carl E. Wynn Foundation. Okay, let me give you the microphone. Hello, thank you everyone. And um, first of all, I'd like to thank Guide Dogs for the Blind for this amazing opportunity of giving me my freedom back and being part of this, this journey. Also, I would like to thank my puppy racers, um, Margaret Baker and um, Peggy, along with her daughter who's not here today, Shannon. Uh, you guys have no idea the impact that this will have in my life, and I do thank you for your love and dedication for racing Crumpet. Um, and I'm very excited to start a new chapter of my life with him, and I will be very happy to share those moments in, every, in everything we do in the future. So thank you so much. Um, to the Carl um, E. Wynn Foundation, thank you so much also for your sponsorship, and it, this is just a blessing. So. Thank you so much. So I'm Peggy. We started this journey with guide dogs when my daughter came home in third grade and said, I found a project I want to do. And she then raised nine dogs before graduating high school. And I've raised two since. They're my empty nester puppies. So we got one when my daughter was first year in college. And then Crumpet arrived when my son was heading off to college. He has been such a joy in our lives, brought so much enthusiasm and excitement in, always ready to go off on an adventure, whether it's an outing or going back and forth between Margaret's and my house, and he's just adjusted to everything wonderfully. When he was about a year old, my family moved to Colorado, so we decided he would come with us to Colorado to finish. And we got out there, and once again, he was ready for a new adventure, whether it was exploring the community or going on hiking trails or hopping on an airplane to come back to Portland. So we just want to wish you both the best in your new adventures together, because I'm sure that once again, Guide Dogs has made an amazing match in this pair. Hi, this, my name is Margaret, and I was a co-raiser with Peggy. Um, I am just thrilled at the match that Guide Dogs has done here. Um, Veronica is super active, and she's got a great active family, very busy woman, and I'm sure Crumpet is just going to have the time of his life and many adventures with her and her family. Um, I have been raising Guide Dog puppies for like some 50 years, and Crumpet he was probably one of the easier dogs to raise. He was, he was just a, a good, solid dog, very easy to train, very cooperative, and he never really did anything naughty, which some dogs do, as we all know. So I just wish you guys the best. I hope you have many, many years of, of adventures and success with him as your leader. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Congrats to Veronica and Crumpet, and we're sure you're going to have lots of adventures together. Our next client is Sean Moore, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He's looking forward to introducing his new dog to his husband, Joseph, and Sean will be showing his new guide all of his favorite routes in Atlanta. Today, Sean is receiving Augie, a male black Labrador retriever, who was raised by Karen Schulhauser of Linden, Washington, and Mary Rains of Bellingham, Washington. And Karen will be here today, and we'll be reading a letter from Mary afterwards. We're waiting for Karen to get up. <laughs> okay. Ready? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to GDB for letting me continue the guide dog lifestyle, and thank you to his pup raisers for raising a great dog in Augie.
Well, hello, everybody. I'm Karen Schulhauser, and I had the honor and privilege of raising Augie, affectionately known as Augie Doggy, to our club. Um, Augie really was a club pet. I raised him for his first eight months and then moved to Nashville, Tennessee. So when that happened, our club really pulled together because they wanted to keep him in the club. And um, we had several people that had stepped up to help raise Augie. Um, one couple, Mary and Brian Rains, who we have a letter from them, who um, they had first, you know, taken him a few days a week, and then when I left, they stepped in to take him, and then when they had an extended trip planned, um, other members of the club had uh, stepped in as well to help raise him. He's just a marvelous dog. He stepped up to every single training that we put him through. If we wanted to challenge him with greats, he was maybe like not sure what we're asking him to do, and then he would take it and never look back and would always know that, okay, I can walk over that great with confidence. He loved going to Costco. I think that was one of his favorite outings that we would take him to. Um, he was great in all the restaurants. Uh, Linden is a very small rural town, so the bus drivers got to know him on the circular bus, and they looked forward to seeing Augie, and they said, you know what, you don't have to pay. It's okay. He can just ride. It's fine. Uh, we took him out to see the garbage trucks because we didn't want him to startle. And he found those fascinating. And he would just sit there and he'd watch them. Uh, and like, and the, the garbage men loved seeing him. So he just has always welcomed every challenge. Just a really marvelous dog, um, including going to the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance and being there um, with a friend who was going through cancer treatment. And he would be there too in the waiting room and wearing his yellow kerchief. So just marvelous dog. Lots of experiences. Um, um, and I think he has a great friend here with Sean. I think it's a great pairing. Um, very cuddly dog, and I heard he still loves to cuddle with you as well. So I would like to just uh, recognize the names of the club members that helped. I need to put on my glasses in order to do this. Because <laughs> we had quite a few of them that would help. Uh, so starting with, we had, uh, so Joe and Nancy Cowan, Carol Fugelstad and David Henry, Kate and Ann Shipp, who are a marvelous mother-daughter duo, uh, Mary Byrne and her dog Gracie also helped with Augie. He loved to play with Gracie. And then Jen and her daughters Grace and Faith Roberts also stepped up to help bring Augie to where he is today to become a friend with Sean. So thank you so much. Augie's trying to fix our tape that's starting to pull up because he's a helper. I've got a letter still. And apologies. Uh, we've got a letter from Mary and Brian. Um, so we've got two photos on the screen. The first is of baby Augie laying in the grass wearing his green puppy coat, and he's looking off to the side with his mouth slightly open. The second is a very cute picture of baby Augie running, and he's mid-stride straight towards the camera with his ears flying straight up in the air, and his uh, mouth is open. So this is from Mary. She says, Brian and I so wanted to be here today to meet Sean and give and receive love from Augie once again. My brother Steve passed away from a two-year battle with cancer earlier this week, and because of that, I wanted to share a small example of why Augie is such a special dog. We were visiting Steve and his wife, Linda, last summer with Augie. They had lost their beloved miniature schnauzer earlier in the year, and Augie walked into their home and straight into their hearts very quickly. With his open heart and playful, calm demeanor, he brought so many smiles and laughters to them. We don't know Sean well yet, but we're confident that Augie will make a profound impact on his life as well. From Mary Rains and Brian Williams. Congratulations to Sean and the, the expanded Team Augie. <laughs> We've got a party crasher. <laughs> so, <laughs> next, who was very eager for her turn. <laughs> Our next graduate is Deanne Solis from Boise, Idaho. She lives with her husband, Daniel, and has two daughters, Alyssa and Ryan, and a cat named Zeke. Deanne is a rehabilitation teacher from the Idaho Commission for the Blind, and she's very excited to go zooming around town with her new guide. Deanne is receiving her first guide, Lolo, who is a ye female yellow Labrador retriever named, raised by Kazumi and Julia Casa of Tucson, Arizona, and Suzanne Kisselberg of Tucson, Arizona. And this team is sponsored by Google. Yes. 
First of all, I'd like to thank Mallory for all the training and patience she had with us because we were, we were fast walkers and she was just running behind us most of the time. And Sue would pop in every once in a while with her wonderful little words of wisdom. So we appreciate her and thank her. And, and also to these wonderful ladies next to me and Kazumi's daughter that couldn't be here today. Um, they are just, they've been so wonderful with Lolo. And um, so I'd like to thank you for all you did for them. And like somebody mentioned earlier that it takes a village and when I didn't realize how big this village was until I got here. And it's just, it's been a really amazing thing. And I've had a really great experience here. So I just want to thank everyone that was involved and thank you to Google for sponsoring us. It was so great. My name is Susie, and it was my pleasure to raise this little girl. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she has spoiled me. I've raised quite a few puppies, but she was a special. So um, when I picked her up off the puppy truck, I had to pick up another puppy. So I went to the car and had the hatch up and put her in a, uh, a cloth kennel I had bought. I thought, oh, she'll be safe. I'll go get the other puppy. Went and got the other puppy, came back to the car and went, oh my goodness. The, it had a faulty zipper. She had pushed out and was on the ground. I went, oh no. <laughs> so I put her into the back seat where I had put a sling, put her in with the other puppy, and we went home and everything was fine. But it was a surprise, and I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> but she turned out to be a precious little girl, and I enjoyed every minute with her and with Kazumi, and uh, she was a pleasure. Every night before we would go to bed, she would go in and had to give my husband a hug. So it was very sweet. And her first mud puddle, I thought, oh, well, it didn't rain much in Tucson. So I thought, mm, what's she going to do? So she put her feet in the puddle, and she jumped straight up. And it was, it was pretty funny to watch her. She looked like a little deer jumping up. So. But she was a pleasure to, to raise, and I'm so glad that you have her because a very good match. So, anyway, and I'd like to thank Kazumi because she was a very good partner in this, in this partnership. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kazumi, and then after Lolo record, I moved to Japan. I flew from Japan yesterday to meet the Lolo and her new partner, Diane. Lolo is my second guide dog dog puppy. She has been a very smart and a good girl since she was young. I would like to thank all the people who helped the Lolo to become a guide dog. At first, I would like to say thank you to Suji. Here is my co -raiser. Her wealth of experience and knowledge was a great support for me as a new raiser. Debbie uh, is the, our club leader and then raises of the Brinker, who is graduated today. She did a great job organizing the club and then well mentored me and then gave me a lot of advice. I am happy that the Brinker also graduated with the Lolo today because he is the puppy who came from GDB with my first puppy, Alvin, and then took the puppy kindergarten class together. Sue, my neighbor in the house I lived in, joined the GDB club with me. She did sit up for Lolo when I was busy. Lolo is a good swimmer because she let Lolo swim in her pool last summer. I would like to thank the member of the GBD Tucson Club. Every, everyone was the very kind, willing to welcome me and my daughter, Julia, and then kindly support us as a puppy raiser. 
and the field manager Sandy gave me strong advice and encouraged me to raise the puppies. I love going out with Lolo. We went to the shopping, visit to the doctor and Zumba class at the YMCA and more other place. Also, we traveled into the fun day in California. She did the heat just one day before the fun day. <laughs> so, but uh, these memories are some of the most wonderful memories of my long life in the United States. And then today, this graduation ceremony added to the, the wonderful memory of my life. Dian and the GBD instructor and then staff, thank you very much to success the training with Lolo. And Dian, I believe that the Lolo will have a lot of wonderful, uh, make, make a lot of wonderful memory of your life. And Lolo, Thank you for inviting me to the graduation, and I hope you enjoy your work. Thank you. Congratulations to Deanne and Lolo. We know that they're going to do all of their fun adventures with enthusiasm. Our final graduate is Robert White, who came all the way from Moncton, New Brunswick. He's enjoying retirement with his wife, Karen, Cat Murphy, and pet dog, Willow. And Robert's very excited to add a fluffy golden to their household. He's receiving his second guide, Brinker, a male golden retriever raised by Debbie Gordon of Tucson, Arizona, and Melinda Franz of Tucson, Arizona. Okay, Robert, it goes. Here you go. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the GDB uh, community for uh, finding me this beautiful dog, Brinker. And uh, I'd like to thank um, my instructor, Sue Chong, to put, for putting up with me. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the puppy raiser, Debbie, and Belinda, uh, Melinda, I'm sorry. And uh, all I can say to my classmate is bloop, bloop. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie. Uh, Melinda can't be here. She was out of town this weekend. Um, so back in 1997, and I, we, we will fast forward. It's not going to last that long. Back in 1997, my daughter came home from school and said, I need a project. And my husband said, well, I was reading in our company newspaper about um, raising puppies for guide dogs for the blind. Let's give it a try. So she raised five dogs through middle school and high school. And when she graduated in 2001, I thought that was a lot of fun, a fun thing to do for four years. I'll fast forward to uh, 2022. They put this little fluff ball in my hands. And I think he was like puppy number 31 or something like that. I've lost count. But for those of you out here that are considering raising a puppy, I said go for it. It's a blast. <laughs> They're not all quite as calm and as good as... Um, as a Brinker is, he was very easy, very nice, nice, easy dog to raise, which at my age was really nice to have. Um, I would like to also thank a, a bunch of people, and I do have notes on that too. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank GDB for allowing me to raise these wonderful dogs. Um, I'd like to thank my um, Tucson Club members. I am the leader, and it's, it's just a great group to lead. Um, I'd like to thank my um, co-raiser, Melinda France, as well. The Tucson Club will be donating money towards the harness for both uh, Brinker and for Lolo. Um, I'd like to tr um, thank the trainers. I'd also like to thank those kennel technicians. Or I don't exactly know what their, their title is, but they're the unsung heroes. They're the ones that get to have the fun with the dogs and go in and play with them, but they're also the ones that have to fit, clean up after them. And so thank you very much for doing that. Um, and I'd like to raise, thank the foster families. That's got to be a really tough job. They, they take them on. They take them on as pets. They keep them good on their skills. They bring them to campus every day to train, and then they have to say goodbye to them when they graduate just like we do. Um, Brinker was a joy to raise. He was easy. He was calm. He loved to cuddle with my two family, well, the retired guides, actually. The two retired guides are not always really open to the puppies and cuddling with them, but Brinker was respectful and kind, and they enjoyed him as much as he enjoyed them. Um, 
He loves to get his ears massaged. He loves to put his head in your lap and just um, be loved on. He was raised in the desert, so he's used to rocks and cactus, and now he's going to go and live in the snow. So I'm looking forward to, to um, seeing pictures and hearing about all his ex new, new experiences. I think he and Robert are a perfect match, and um, it's going to be fun look, looking at their journey. Thanks. Congratulations to Robert and Brinker. I think they have one of the longest trips home, going all the way to the far side of the east side of Canada. I get to be the first to say congratulations to Class Organ 491. It's been a wonderful two weeks, and I wish you all the best on your next adventures. Sorry, I've got to grab a bench. So next, we're going to have a guide work demonstration. Candice has agreed, and uh, her yellow lab B have agreed to come be our demo today. So when folks come to train with a guide dog at our campus here, in addition to guide work training, they do a lot of, they learn a lot of other things, like a workshop about animal learning theory, a TSA airport simulation, and one of the things that we do is clicker training. So, the way this works is during formal training, our dogs learn most of their skills with a clicker. So we pair that sound with kibble so that the dog knows that the clicker means we really like that behavior you just did. And so as we do things like walk up to a curb, we click, the dog thinks kibble, and they're more likely to stop at their next curb. So as we pair the click with food, we can use that to do all different things like obedience, and then, once the clients have the dog, they can use it as well. So one of the things they can practice is using hand targeting and the clicker to find an object that they might encounter on their route. So like a bench, or a bus stop, or the elevator to their apartment. So B knows a hand target. So when Candace makes that fist, she's going to touch and get a click so that she knows that Candace wants to find whatever she puts her hand on. So they're going to practice finding this bench for us. So, and you can tell B very much enjoys the, the clicker game. So, the, this helps B realize that the bench is a target, not an obstacle that we want to avoid. And they're adding a little bit of distance slowly, and now that B is anticipating, we know that she's starting to get the idea of what we want to find. She's very wiggly and excited about this process, as you can tell. So, when Candace is ready, she's going to pick up the harness handle and let B find it for her <laughs> with a lot of enthusiasm. Good job, B. <laughs> and so, this is something the clients could use. Um, you know, if this was their bus stop as they're coming down the block, they would say, forward, find the bench, and their dog could find, find that target for them. Thank you very much, Candace and B. They'll be here to uh, answer any questions that you might have at the end. This concludes our graduation ceremony. Um, if you are here for the puppy raiser information session, Linda's gonna meet you at the back of the auditorium in about 10 minutes afterwards. Thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations to all of the clients. <laughs>